Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Denisov. I'm software architect at Pivotal and the commuter on Apache Ambari and Hulk projects. Today I'll talk about the federated queries across multiple data systems, data engines, and data formats, and the way how to do it with Greenplum and its extension technology called PXF. We'll do a short introduction into the federated queries concepts and review a few use cases relevant to it. Uh, at this time, you might be thinking that that will be talk about foreign data wrappers, uh, but foreign data wrappers are not yet available with the Greenplum. So Greenplum has its own system for accessing external data called external tables. We'll review that technology as well as PXF architecture and functionality. And then we briefly venture into some advanced topics uh, relevant to federated queries. For those not yet familiar with Greenplum, Pivotal Greenplum is the world's first open source, massively parallel processing data platform uh, designed for advanced data analytics. It's based on PostgreSQL database and has been in development since early 2000s and has been open sourced by Pivotal in 2015. Um, the system is um, targeted towards business analysts to run business intelligence and reporting. It can be used by data scientists for machine learning and running AI algorithms. It can be used by developers to write custom applications. It provides interface in standard SQL as well as ODBC and JDBC connectivity. It manages multi-structured data, both internal and external, provides connectivity to external systems, and can be deployed both on-premises and on a variety of public cloud providers. The architecture for Greenplum is that of a massively parallel processing shared nothing architecture. Basically, PostgreSQL is a great database in itself, but if it needs to manage a lot of data, like in terabytes, then it becomes impractical and somewhat impossible to do. So what Pivotal has done is to take PostgreSQL database and make it cluster aware. There are two types of nodes in there. There is a master types of nodes, uh, which are responsible for planning of query, accepting query from the user, uh, handling the connection and dispatching the query to the segments. Uh, the segment hosts are where the data resides and the data is distributed across those hosts either randomly or based on some value of a distribution column. Query processing and execution happens on the segments and then data is returned over interconnect to the master. Interconnect is a network fabric based on an advanced uh, UDP-based protocol which allows uh, segments to shuffle data and send them to master effectively and efficiently. And finally, there is connectivity tools so that external data can be loaded into Greenplum in parallel. What's important for us to understand here is that Greenplum is very good in working with sharded data. It knows how to shuffle them effectively. So when we load data from external systems, we should take advantage of that capacity and should be able to uh, represent our external data set as a virtually sharded data set, such that each uh, shard or partition can be loaded by the segment in parallel. So we tell that data tells the story, uh, but data is not uniform. Um, data is important for the modern enterprise to stay competitive and successful, uh, but the problem is that data is stored in multiple formats. Uh, it can be structured data, such as data in the databases, where its schema is well-defined. There can be semi-structured data, such as XML and JSON files, and there can be totally unstructured data. Um, that makes reaching an overall view of your data in the enterprise a challenging task. The problem is further increased by the fact that all the data in all the different formats can be stored in a variety of different uh, engines and platforms in the enterprise based on the operational characteristics. 
Those can include cloud storage, such as Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage, relational databases, uh, in-memory data grids, such as Pivotal Gemfire, analytical engines, such as Pivotal Greenplum, processing frameworks, such as Apache Spark or Apache Kafka, and finally, data can be stored in the data lakes uh, backed by Apache technology, such as Apache Hadoop or Hive or HBase. So all that makes uh, running analytics across all this data a daunting task. So the question then becomes, how can we access all this data? Can we do it from a single tool in one place? Can a tool such as Greenplum be leveraged to uh, get all the information from all these data sources and data systems and provide a consistent view to the customer? Well, let's consider a few use cases to further understand that scenario. The first one is pretty simple. We want to build a report on data stored within Greenplum itself. Here we manage our customer information in the Greenplum table called customers. And we want to find out all the customer names which are located in California. We write a simple SQL query. Greenplum consults its internal storage and produces results set from there. It's uh, simple, it's fast, and that's what Greenplum has been built for. Now, what if those customers submit orders and those orders are stored in Hadoop HDFS system in a CSV file? What we want a user to do is to be able to seamlessly write a query similar to the previous one, such that they can access order information directly from analytical tools such as Greenplum without even knowing the file is stored in an HDFS. So here is an example of such a query. We want to select all orders from today. Uh, we want the user to be able to write this query and not worry how data will be obtained from Hadoop HDFS, how it will be brought into Greenplum. It should look all seamless and native. Taking this one step further, what if we want to merge data? Here we want to merge information about customers with their orders, with the customer information coming from Pivotal Greenplum itself, and the order information coming from Hadoop HDFS. And again, we want the user to write a simple SQL query uh, with a join between those two tables. And here is an example, right? We want to find all orders from today uh, and include customer names along with those orders. So this is what we are after. Simplicity and efficient execution and ability to access data residing externally as if it were internal data set. Another use case where this capacity comes handy is querying across data store and operational systems based on the age of the data. If your business has a requirement for high rate of data ingestion, then in-memory data grid might be a good choice for this technology. So as an analyst using Pivotal Greenplum, my question would be, can I work with data that has been created in the memory grid just five seconds ago? And also, can I run a report on data that has been created five months ago and currently resides in a relational database? And what if I want to inspect the data which has been archived and uh, has been sitting in the Hadoop data lake for five years? So making that data available for analytics with Pivotal Greenplum is a fantastic and very powerful feature. So to summarize, when we talk about federated queries, we talk about the ability to answer a SQL query with the information from different sources. Now let's consider the technology which makes it possible within Pivotal Greenplum. The basic technology is called external table. It provides a definition for the schema of the external data, the protocol which needs to be used to access the data, the location of the data in the external system, and the format of that external data. You can also create a writable external table so that data can be exported from Greenplum into the external system. And there is also a specific type of external table called web external table, which allows us to connect to servers running HTTP protocol 
but that specific scenario is out of the scope for this presentation. At runtime, the segment figures out if it needs to connect to external system, it calls the plugin connector for the external data for a given protocol, which actually executes the query. The external protocol provides connectivity to the external system, which is basically implementations of methods to read data and write data. It also defines the validation logic to make sure the semantic of the location is properly specified by the user. And it's usually compiled and packaged as a shared library, such as .so file, and loaded by the Greenplum segment dynamically. Uh, there are a few protocols available uh, by default with Greenplum. Uh, historically, a lot of them are based on the ability to load files into the Greenplum, such as file protocol allows us to load files located locally on the segments. GPFD's protocol uh, gives us ability to load files which are located on remote hosts. S3 protocol is for files located in AWS S3 bucket. Um, there is a legacy protocol called GPHDFS, which allows us to load data from Hadoop HDFS. The HTTP protocol is for web external tables. So as I mentioned, uh, the implementation of the protocol needs to be written in C programming language. And um, that makes it hard to interface with systems uh, that have their primary APIs uh, written in Java, such as a lot of Apache projects, Hadoop in particular, uh, as well as Apache Hive and HBase. Uh, relational databases provide connectivity via JDBC, uh, and memory grids also have Java-based APIs, messaging systems, and so on. So the need, uh, there was a need for the new version of the protocol that would be more flexible and would allow developers to hook up and plug in their Java-based systems easily. So that protocol was called PXF, and that's what we're going to focus on today. PXF stands for Platform Extension Framework. It gives us ability to do the parallel high throughput data access, uh, gives us ability to do federated queries across heterogeneous data sources, and provides a few of built-in connectors that map a Greenplum database external table definition to an external data source. Historically, PXF was originally part of Apache Hawk incubating project. It was launched in 2012 and open source by Pivotal in 2015. And in Hawk, PXF was mostly used to connect to data located in Hadoop ecosystem. PXF is open sourced under Apache license and has been available with Pivotal Greenplum since 2017 with 5.1 release. Let's look a little bit at the PXF architecture. Uh, PXF consists of two components, basically. There's a PXF extension, which is the shared library written in C programming language and distributed with every Greenplum segment. It is loaded dynamically into the Greenplum segment process. And then it communicates via REST APIs with the PXF agent web app, which is, um, web app deployed on the Tomcat server located on every segment host. The PXF agent itself consists of a server which accepts requests from the extension and the set of connectors. Uh, each connector is specific to uh, specific backend technology and is responsible for providing ability to read and write data to it. So we have, for example, HDFS connector, Hive connector, and variety of other connectors. Um, that makes it easy for developers to focus on creating the connector that interfaces with their own backend technology and leave all the details, all the low level details about communicating to Greenplum to the PXF agent and the extension itself. Let's consider how the data flow for importing HDFS file works uh, with PXF. In this example, we have the Greenplum cluster on the left side of the picture with the master host having the master process there. And we have two segment hosts where each host has three segment processes and uh, we have one PXF agent sitting on each of the hosts. So at first, when 
user submits a query to the master, master plans it and dispatches it to the to segments for execution. Each segment starts execution of its portion in parallel. Then each segment obtains a thread in the PXF JVM. And then PXF asks HDFS name node for the information on file fragments. If you remember, we said that we need to represent our external data set as a set of sharded uh, partitions so that segments can process it in parallel. That's the purpose of this call, right? We want to find out all the different fragments a specific file consists of so we can load them in parallel by all the segments uh, that are available to process it. After PXF obtains the information about file fragments, it decides on the workload distribution, basically which thread and which segment will reach, will read which fragments. And finally, PXF reads the specific data fragments from HDFS APIs, and this information comes from the data nodes directly. And once the information is read, it passes it to the segments. And finally, segments convert data into Greenplum database tuples and return them to the master. And master aggregates all the information it obtains from the segments and presents a unified data set to the user. So let's consider in more details the functional components that uh, a connector writer will have to implement, which make the flow we just reviewed possible. The first uh, functional interface is the fragmenter, which responsibility is to split data from an external data source into a list of independent fragments that can be read in parallel. Example of a fragment would be a file split in HDFS or a table partition in JDBC. The second interface is accessor. That's a functional component that reads a single fragment from the external data source and produces a list of rows or records from it. Example of such a record would be a line in a text file or a row in a JDBC result set. And each row would conceptually correspond to a tuple in the uh, Greenplum database table. And the third and, and final interface is the resolver. Its responsibility is to deserialize a record or a row into specific fields and transform the data types uh, into those provided by Greenplum. So example of a field would be a value between commas in a CSV file, a CSV line, or a column value in a JDBC result set. So basically when to enable the data flow, uh, we need to provide specific implementation for these three different functional interfaces. And we made it easier for developers to combine those and we introduced a concept called profile, uh, which is basically a logical name mapping uh, between these three different implementations that allow a specific flow. In this example, uh, there is a HDFS text simple profile, which consists of the fragmenter, which knows how to break up a file from HDFS. Uh, line break accessor, which knows how to read files separated by line breaks, and string pass resolver, which knows how to deserialize the data. The profiles are useful when we defined PXF external table in Greenplum. Uh, so for example, for uh, us to be able to access our CSV file, which is located in Hadoop, we need to first of all create extension PXF for our database and then we create an external table or called sales at this example with a schema which corresponds to the columns in a CSV file and the appropriate data types and in the location we specify the PXF protocol we specify the location of that CSV file in HDFS and we specify the profile uh, such as HDFS text simple and we let the Greenplum know that the format of the data will be in the text. So that's the way how we would define an external table in Greenplum, which will be able to interface with PXF and load data from HDFS. So in summary, here are how all pieces fit together. 
Fragmenter, Accessor, and Resolver, they work together uh, to process data from external system, to load it from there, break it into fragments, then into rows, and then into values, and finally send it to the protocol handler in Greenplum to convert it into tuples and uh, represent this data set within GPDB. Greenplum external table, as we reviewed, defines schema allocation and format of the profile to use uh, with the data. And uh, here also we show the example of the write flow where data can be exported from Pivotal Greenplum into external data source. In this example, you can see there is no fragmenter because the data is already pre-fragmented. The data is like distributed and sharded on the Greenplum side itself. So every segment will work with subset of data it manages and send it through PXF to be written to the external system. So we ship a few connectors with PXF directly. Uh, here is an example of HDFS connector. We support simple file formats such as uh, CSV or JSON or more complex formats uh, such as Parquet or Avro. There's also a Hive connector, which also supports simple text files uh, and more optimized columnar storage formats such as ORC or Parquet. Um, what Hive connector does, it basically um, reads the files, reads the data which is managed as the Hive table. We only utilize metadata from Hive. We don't use the Hive execution agent to obtain data. Uh, because we already have the query execution engine in Greenplum, so the only thing we need to do is to send data to Greenplum. And to get the data, we find out the HDFS location of a file, which backs the data in Hive, and then we get information about uh, that data directly from HDFS. Uh, we have a few other connectors. Uh, some of them were contributed by the community members outside of Pivotal, which illustrates the power of the open source model and the benefits of the componentized architecture such as PXF. If you're interested in developing your own connector, please reach to us. Uh, we always welcome new contributions and uh, uh, welcome you to develop connector for your own backend system of choice. Uh, now, when we review the basics, let's look at a few advanced topics for uh, which are relevant for uh, federated queries. The first one is um, data processing optimizations. Uh, we basically want to process our data as efficient as we can, which means we should try to avoid data deserialization if we can. If we can read the chunk of text uh, from external system and give it to Greenplum directly without any resolving in PXF, that would be great. And there are a few cases like that. Um, Greenplum knows how to handle CSV or text files. So there is no point for us to do the resolution in PXF itself. We just read uh, bytes from external system and ship it over to Greenplum for deserialization. Another technique is a columnar vectorization. If we have to resolve data and the data is stored in the columnar format, for example, then it's more efficient to resolve uh, a simple column at once for all the rows. Uh, and that way the compiler provides optimizations we can use to make that process uh, more efficient. We should always try to uh, send multiple rows and batches. Uh, that improved performance and throughput. And in general, we want to limit the amount of data which is read from an external system and sent over the network. There are a few techniques which allows us to do that. The first technique is a column projection. Uh, basically here, uh, what we want to do, or a customer wants to do, uh, is they want to select item and amount from orders uh, coming from California. So they're not interested in all the information about the order. It's only item and amount fields that they are after. So we don't really need to read all the order from the backend system and give, like send it all the way through. If we can limit the information retrieved just to those columns, that would be the most efficient. 
for that to work, we need to propagate information about which columns the user is interested in, all the way from green plum master to green plum segment, and then to PXF, and then to specific PXF uh, connector. And that would be up to the connector whether it can utilize that information or not. Um, an example uh, here is if the data is stored in a Hive ORC format, which is a columnar storage format, then Hive adapter can only read uh, those files which represent specific columns, which greatly improves I.O. efficiency. Even if the adapter cannot take advantage of the column projection, PXF itself will filter out those columns which are not required by the customer and send over only those which are needed, which still improves performance significantly. Another technique is the predicate pushdown. Similar to column projection here, uh, customer is only interested in orders coming from California. So that's what we call predicate. And in the same manner, that predicate has to be available, uh, has to be made available all the way from master to segment to PXF and to the adapter. Um, and if, that, if the adapter can uh, utilize this information, such as maybe the data is partitioned by the state, and you can only read one partition of data, that also greatly improves the amount of data we can read and improves IO performance and the networking performance. Like the whole partition can be eliminated in this case, uh, but if not, then PXF itself does not evaluate predicates. So it's, this case is uh, truly really to the adapter uh, to take advantage of uh, that feature. Another topic is user impersonation. Uh, impersonation allows PXF server to submit requests to external systems on behalf of Greenplum and user with their own identity. So let's consider the first case, right? We have um, two users, Alice and Scott. Uh, they're Greenplum users, uh, but they also have their specific data in HDFS. And that's a somewhat sensitive and their private data, so they don't want others to be able to read it. However, when they use Greenplum, they want to be able to access it and run analytics on it. So if there is no impersonation, uh, what happens is that when those users submit requests to Greenplum and then to PXF server, PXF server uses its own system identity, such as uh, OS user, which runs PXF, such as JP admin to go and request the data from external system. And for that to work, uh, the GP admin user would need to be given either super user access to the external system or somehow be allowed access to these private data files, which usually is not a desirable feature. Uh, so to solve that problem, we provide the impersonation feature, which when turned on, uh, will make PXF to submit those requests to HDFS using identity of the user which made the request initially. So you can see here in the bottom part of the diagram, uh, we have PXF submitting requests to HDFS on behalf of those users with their own identity. In this case, the only thing which is needed to be configured on the Hadoop side is the proxy access. So basically let GP admin user um, impersonate users Alice and Scott uh, from PXF. And then the whole access control system, which is pretty rich in HDFS, will be respected and taken into account. So that's very powerful and important feature for um, users who are interested in the secure access to their data. And final, but one of the most important features is the ability to work with Kerberos clusters. Uh, Kerberos is the strong authentication system based on keys and tickets. In this example, if we have a Hadoop HDFS secured with Kerberos, then the user or PXF server cannot simply send a request for data to it using its APIs. What would be needed is for the PXF server to register uh, its own service principle with the Kerberos KDC server and uh, obtain the appropriate credentials, uh, store its secret uh, in the key tab file, and then obtain the tickets from the KDC dynamically to be able to submit authenticated requests to Hadoop. Uh, and that ability uh, allows uh, PXF server and Greenplum 
the work against uh, clusters secured by Kerberos, which is very important enterprise feature as well. So finally, basically in summary, what we did today, we reviewed the federated query concept. We explored technology in Greenplum uh, called external tables, which allows us to do that. Uh, we learned about PXF and its architecture, and we understood how to use Greenplum with PXF for creating federated queries across multiple data sources, data engines, and data formats. I hope you find that presentation informative. There is more information here if you want to get into more details, and please feel free to contact me with further questions. Thank you.